Hello, today we'll be going through practice questions 11 to 20 for the CompTIA Security Plus exam. Let's begin. A penetration tester begins an engagement by performing port and service scans against the client's environment according to the rules of engagement. Which of the following reconnaissance types is the tester performing? The correct answer is A. Active. Active reconnaissance involves directly interacting with the target system to gather information, such as performing port scans or service enumeration. These actions can be detected by intrusion detection systems and are typical in penetration testing once permission is granted. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Passive. Passive reconnaissance involves collecting information without directly engaging the target, such as using public records or who is lookups, so the target remains unaware. C. Defensive. Defensive actions focus on protecting systems and responding to threats, not gathering information about a target. D. Offensive. While penetration testing overall is considered an offensive activity, offensive is not a specific type of reconnaissance. It's a broader category that includes various attack and recon techniques. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Which of the following is required for an organization to properly manage its restore process in the event of system failure? The correct answer is B. DRP. A DRP outlines the procedures and resources required to restore critical IT systems and data after a failure or disaster. It ensures business continuity by providing a structured approach to system recovery, making it essential for managing the restore process effectively. Why the other options are incorrect? A. IRP. An IRP focuses on detecting, responding to, and mitigating security incidents. It doesn't cover system restoration processes after a broader failure. C. RPO. The RPO defines the maximum tolerable amount of data loss, but by itself, it doesn't manage the restore process. It's just a metric used within the DRP. D. SDLC. The software development lifecycle relates to developing and maintaining software, not recovering from system failures. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Which of the following vulnerabilities is associated with installing software outside of a manufacturer's approved software repository? The correct answer is D. Site loading. Site loading refers to installing applications from sources other than the official or approved software repositories. This practice can expose systems to unvetted and potentially malicious software, increasing the risk of security vulnerabilities and malware infections. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Jailbreaking. Jailbreaking removes manufacturer-imposed restrictions, often to allow site loading but it is not itself the vulnerability caused by installing unauthorized software. B. Memory injection. Memory injection is a technique used in attacks to insert malicious code into a processor's memory. It's not directly related to how software is installed. C. Resource reuse. Resource reuse involves improper handling of system resources like memory or file handles potentially leading to vulnerabilities, but it's unrelated to software installation sources. Therefore, the correct answer is D. An analyst is evaluating the implementation of zero trust principles within the data plane. Which of the following would be most relevant for the analyst to evaluate? The correct answer is A. Secured zones. In the context of the data plane, which handles the actual movement of data, evaluating secured zones is the most relevant. Secured zones segment the network into tightly controlled areas where access to resources is restricted and monitored, aligning with zero trust principles of never trust, always verify. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Subject role. This pertains more to identity and access management in the control plane, not directly to the mechanisms of data handling within the data plane. C. Adaptive identity. While important in zero trust, adaptive identity focuses on dynamically adjusting access based on context, again, 
part of the control plane rather than the data plane. D. Threat scope reduction. This is a general goal of zero trust, not a specific mechanism or implementation element to evaluate in the data plane. Therefore, the correct answer is A. An engineer needs to find a solution that creates an added layer of security by preventing unauthorized access to internal company resources. Which of the following would be the best solution? The correct answer is B. Jump server. A jump server acts as a controlled access point between external networks and internal resources. It adds a layer of security by restricting direct access to critical systems, forcing users to authenticate and connect through a hardened, monitored gateway, thereby reducing the attack surface. Why the other options are incorrect? A. RDP server an RDP server allows remote desktop access but doesn't inherently provide an added layer of security. In fact, exposing RDP directly can introduce risk if not tightly secured. C. Proxy server. A proxy server is mainly used to filter or control outbound internet traffic or requests from clients, not to control access to internal resources. D. Hypervisor. A hypervisor is used for running virtual machines and is not designed to restrict or control network access to internal systems. Therefore, the correct answer is B. A company's web filter is configured to scan the URL for strings and deny access when matches are found. Which of the following search strings should an analyst employ to prohibit access to non-encrypted websites? The correct answer is B. HTTP the string HTTP is present in the URLs of non-encrypted websites. By blocking URLs that contain HTTP, the web filter can effectively deny access to sites that are not using HTTPS, which is the encrypted and secure version of HTTP. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Encryption off. This is not a standard part of URLs and would rarely appear it's unlikely to be a reliable indicator of non-encrypted sites. C. www.asterix.com This is a wildcard domain pattern that matches many websites, both encrypted and non-encrypted. It does not target non-HTTPS sites specifically. D. 443 Port 443 is used for encrypted HTTPS traffic. Blocking 443 would block secure sites not non-encrypted ones. Therefore, the correct answer is B. A company needs to provide administrative access to internal resources while minimizing the traffic allowed through the security boundary. Which of the following methods is the most secure? The correct answer is A. Implementing a bastion host. A bastion host is a hardened server specifically designed to provide secure administrative access to internal resources. It acts as a controlled entry point through the security boundary, allowing minimal and monitored traffic while keeping internal systems protected. This is the most secure option for minimizing exposure while still enabling access. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Deploying a perimeter network. A perimeter network is used to expose services to external users while isolating them from internal resources. It doesn't specifically control or minimize admin access traffic. C. Installing a WAF. A web application firewall protects web applications from attacks, but doesn't provide administrative access or control inbound management traffic. D. Utilizing single sign-on. SSO simplifies authentication across services but doesn't reduce or control the network traffic passing through security boundaries. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A security analyst is reviewing alerts in the seam related to potential malicious network traffic coming from an employee's corporate laptop. The security analyst has determined that additional data about the executable running on the machine is necessary to continue the investigation. Which of the following logs should the analyst use as a data source? The correct answer is D. Endpoint. 
Endpoint logs provide detailed information about processes and executables running on a specific device, such as a corporate laptop. These logs can show what executable is generating the suspicious traffic, when it ran, and possibly its hash or path, which is crucial for deeper investigation. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Application. Application logs record events specific to software programs but may not provide detailed information about the executable responsible for network traffic. B. IPS IDS. IPS IDS monitor and detect suspicious network activity, but they do not provide visibility into the processes or executables running on the endpoint. C. Network. Network logs show traffic patterns and connections but lack visibility into which specific process or executable initiated the traffic on the local machine. Therefore, the correct answer is D. A cyber operations team informs a security analyst about a new tactic malicious actors are using to compromise networks. SIEM alerts have not yet been configured. Which of the following best describes what the security analyst should do to identify this behavior? The correct answer is D. Threat hunting. Threat hunting is a proactive approach where analysts manually search through systems and networks to detect threats that evade existing security tools, such as SIEM alerts. Since the new tactic isn't yet covered by automated detection, the analyst must actively look for signs of compromise using logs, behavior patterns, and threat intelligence. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Digital forensics. Digital forensics involves collecting and analyzing data after an incident has occurred, often for legal or investigative purposes, not for proactively identifying unknown threats. B. E-discovery. E-discovery pertains to identifying and collecting digital evidence for legal cases and is not relevant to detecting new malicious behavior in networks. C. Incident response. Incident response is the process of handling confirmed security incidents. In this scenario, there is no confirmed incident yet, just a new tactic that needs proactive investigation. Therefore, the correct answer is D. A company purchased cyber insurance to address items listed on the risk register. Which of the following strategies does this represent? The correct answer is B. Transfer. Purchasing cyber insurance is a classic example of risk transfer, where the financial impact of a potential threat is shifted to a third party, in this case, the insurance provider. The company still faces the risk, but the cost of recovery is offset by the insurance coverage. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Accept. Accepting a risk means acknowledging it without taking action, which is not the case here since the company took steps to address it through insurance. C. Mitigate. Mitigation involves reducing the likelihood or impact of a risk through controls or safeguards, not transferring the consequences to another party. D. Avoid. Avoiding a risk means eliminating the activity that causes it altogether. Buying insurance doesn't eliminate the risk, it just manages the fallout. Therefore, the correct answer is B.